Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. This is going to be a story that's almost unbelievable. Almost. A thing will happen which people, scientists included, will tell you cannot possibly happen. As your parents or grandparents were told that radio could not happen. Television, heavier than air flight, and space travel could not happen. The thing is almost impossible. However, Kathy and Doug Sellers live in a middle-class suburb. Their neighbors are people to whom they say good morning, with whom they discuss the weather and the crabgrass. That's about the extent of the neighborliness. So that Doug is surprised this evening when Kathy says... Early dinner tonight. We've been invited next door to spend the evening. Oh, the Carters, they invited us over? No, not the Carters. No, next door the other way, oh. the Joneses. Well, they just moved in yesterday. I know you wouldn't think they'd be ready for guests so soon. But they're completely settled in. I never saw anything like it. Mm. How come you saw it in the first place? Well, I went over there. She's such a little thing. I just thought I'd go over and see if I could help. That was neighborly of you. Well, but there wasn't anything to help with. Mm. You you like her? Mm, she's nice, yes. Her name's Tootie. Tootie? I said we'd come, okay? Oh, sure, of course. He's kind of funny looking. Well, they're, they're quite small, both of them. Yeah, but he, he's uh, he's got a big head. <laughs> they, I, I know they can't help it, but somehow... Small people with big heads put me off. Our mystery drama, Through the Looking Glass, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Fielden Farrington and stars Anne Shepard. There is a certain excitement in meeting new people who may or may not turn out to be friends. Friendship, not to be confused with acquaintanceship, requires so many parallels of taste, viewpoints, needs, backgrounds, and the like, that it's quite remarkable we see as much of it as we do. Kathy and Doug Sellers are calling to spend an evening with two strangers who obviously would like to become friends. Hello, Kathy. Oh, I'm so glad you could both come. Hi, Tootie. This is my husband, Doug. Oh, how do you do? Uh, how, do you, how do you do? Well, oh, please come in. I want you to meet Sid. Uh, Sid? Oh, he's upstairs. Sometimes he's so slow getting ready for anything. Well, won't you sit down? You really are settled in, aren't you? Uh, it's very nice, too. Everything looks brand new. Oh, yes, it is. Well, can I get you a cup of coffee or... Oh, dear, I don't think we have anything to drink. I mean, like... Well, coffee's fine. Hello down there. I'll be right with you. Sid, do we have any... You didn't get any whiskey or anything, did you? No, I'm sorry. I, I am sorry. I should have thought of that. We don't drink at all, you see. And it's just... Easy to forget. That's no excuse. I should have Oh, been... that's all right. We don't drink either. Not really. Hardly ever. You see, where we come from, people just don't drink. Oh. You must come from a far distance. I'm trying to think of a place where nobody drinks. Well, things are very different here. We're really very... Oh, what is that word, Sid? Uh, backwoodsy. We're very backwoodsy. Yes. Uh-huh. You're, you're putting us on, right? We're... What? You're putting us on, kidding us. Oh. Well, I mean, this, this furniture looks as if it had been designed for uh, t 20 years from now. You <laughs> Backwoodsy? Well, the furniture's all new, you know. And you've got it all arranged so quickly. As I told Doug earlier, it looks as though you've been living here for years. And uh, he's right, you know. It's, it's very advanced. Is it? Um, well, is it too... It's all right, Tootie. She's so afraid we're going to seem, you know, uh, different. Uh, 
Doc, did you hear what Tootie just told me? Sid's in the same business you're in. No kidding. Are you an inventor, Doc? No, I'm a... Well, more like a designer, actually. Internal combustion engines. Oh, we're not too far apart. As a matter of fact, I'm working on something right now that may put you out of business. Oh? Uh, what would that be? I've got a motor that's powered by solar energy. Oh. By sunlight? Just sunlight? Yes. Well, not the light itself, of course. By the, uh, the emanations. Does it work? Oh, yes. Would you like to see it? See it? I've got a working model down in the basement. A solar energy motor in the basement? Oh, I, I, I see. It doesn't need the direct light. And, and besides, it stores. Do you want to see it? Uh, <laughs> aren't you afraid I'll steal it? I mean, <laughs> if you've got a solar energy engine that really works... No, she... I'm not afraid. Now, now, please don't be offended. I've had to work out some pretty radical new mathematical concepts that... Well, you wouldn't understand them just looking at the model. Nobody would. Okay. I'd love to see it. Good. Come along. The good thing about it is you don't even need a sunny day. All you need is the sun on your side of the earth. Would you like more coffee? If Doug's anything like Sid, they'll be down there for hours. No, I don't think I could handle any more coffee. Thank you. You're right about Doug, though. Um, where, where did, um... Uh... Sid worked before you came here. I mean, maybe he worked for somebody Doug knows. Well, he didn't actually work for anyone. He's always been just an inventor. Well, Doug knows so many people in the business. We moved around so much before we went to work for Driscoll Motors. I just thought we might have some mutual friends. No. I mean, it doesn't seem likely. We haven't lived anywhere but, you know, there and now here. Well, uh, where did you live before? It was just, well, like a different world almost. That's why I'm so pleased about tonight. We're the kind of people who just can't live without friends, you know? Mm. We were afraid there wouldn't be anyone we could, well, be friends with. So that makes tonight so good. Oh, Tootie, you don't have to worry. We have a lot of friends you'll probably meet. Where we used to live, we knew everyone. Just everyone. Oh, that must have been nice wherever it was. Oh, yes. It was all we knew, of course. In many ways, it's better here. Much better. It's so quiet. How can a motor with any guts to it be so quiet lately? <laughs> I've heard cats purr louder. Well, there's nothing to make noise, actually, except the friction. And there's very little of that. It's beautiful. Uh, how big would it have to be to power, say, an automobile? How big? Well, this engine itself would pull a freight train. So 12, maybe 15 cars. That little thing? Energy doesn't come in sizes, Doug. With refinements I'm not tooled for here, a motor like this could supply all the electricity a medium-sized city would need. You're kidding. It has implications, as a matter of fact, that could lead to the obsolescence of electricity itself. <laughs> Man, you, you are talking revolution, you know that? It would be a tremendous step. Yes, it would almost certainly entail some dislocation. Dislocation? It would bomb out just about everything our society is based on. Well, the short-term adjustment would be severe, I don't deny that. Temporary chaos... The gain would be long-range, not immediate. Ooh, scares me. <laughs> no kidding, you, you, you don't know what you've got here. Oh, yes, I know. What I have here is a device, a ridiculously simple little device which would make the air we breathe sweet and pure again. Make the oceans, the lakes, and the rivers habitable for marine creatures. Put an end to nervous breakdowns from the sheer clamor of civilization. As you say, destroy everything today's society is based on. Well, uh, today's society isn't exactly utopia, I, I, I know that, but uh, Sid, it's the only society we've got. Would you like to see the design on paper? Talk about the math involved. Well, you said I couldn't understand the math anyway. No, 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 I said you couldn't understand it simply from looking at the motor. Actually, like the motor, the math is quite simple. 
can't tell you how glad I am that you could come over and just, you know, visit. I'm afraid I've talked too much shop to Doug, though. Huh? Oh, 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 no, no, not at all. I'm sorry. I guess I'm sort of preoccupied. Dinner next time, all right? Okay. I'd love to watch that uh, gadget of yours turn out a whole dinner. Uh, l- let's go, Kathy. I mean, I do have to get to work early tomorrow. Uh, I'll be in touch, Sid, okay? Good night. Good night. Good night, and thanks again. Did the prove neighbors? What did you say, Tootie? I say, did the prove... Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. We agreed not to speak that way. Not even when we're alone. Oh, I keep forgetting. Did you approve of the neighbors? Yes. On the whole, yes, I I think so. What did you think of her? Well, it's hard to get used to these big, clumsy people, you know. But I rather liked her. She's a little inquisitive. But I guess that's natural. (laughs) It's nothing I can't handle. He's a good man. He does have that stupid short-sightedness they all have. But I think he'll do. Well, I don't care what you told them about us hardly drinking. I want a good solid slug of bourbon. Okay. Something happened? What? Did he tell you where they're from? Where they moved here from? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, she's a pretty close-mouthed one. Aren't you even going to put any water or anything with it? He's quite a guy, that Sid. How do you mean? But when Tootie... Uh, what kind of a name is that, anyway? Uh, anyway, when, when she called him an inventor, she sure wasn't kidding. It, did she say anything about where they came from? I told you I spent the whole evening trying to find out where they're from. But she's slippery as an eel. I didn't get to first base. People don't give things away. You have to be suspicious when a man wants to give something away. I I think he was completely cracked, except that crazy math of his works. So does his engine. I don't have any idea what you're talking about. He wants to give it to me. Now, you can't tell me there isn't a catch in that somewhere. He, He just wants to give it to me. The whole thing, no strings attached. Give you what? He's got this machine, this... Motor, his engine, designed it, built it himself, he says, invented it. Draws its power from sunlight, sun rays. Now, it, th- there's a difference. And it's just going to, it's going to blow the whole world up. That's, that's all. A bomb? You mean a bomb? Oh, no, no, no. Just the opposite, I guess you could say. Only, good Lord, the mess it could make. It's, it's like we made a wrong turn a hundred years ago or so. All of us, our whole society, and... And what he wants to do is to back up and make the proper turn. But you just can't wipe out. It's a very scary thing. Kathy. Hmm. What am I going to do? Well, I don't really understand the problem yet, Doc. Okay, okay. He's got a machine that takes its power from the sun, okay? Okay. Yeah, and that's about the size of a, a small vacuum cleaner, and it, it could power a city. It could. I, I've seen it. I've seen the blueprints. I've learned the math. Learned it, mind you, in, in half an hour. And all our old math, everything I spent my life learning, it's all just silly kid stuff. He wants... Did you say he wants to give all this to you? Now, now, figure what it means. Everything we know is down the drain. Now, just think about oil. You've got 50 billion or so barrels of oil tucked away, and you're using it to make the world market go where you want it to go. All of a sudden, your 50 billion barrels of oil aren't worth the price of half a dozen loaves of yesterday's bread. It's not going to make you happy. It's going to make you feel very... Very restless and insecure. Or or you manufacture. Or all your money is in something or other power and light company. Or you, you work in a gas station. Or you're a coal miner. Or I don't care. You're anything. Whatever you do for a living, it's dead. And Sid wants to give the damn thing to me. <laughs> Maybe I don't blame him. Wouldn't... Wouldn't there be a lot of money in it? Not for us? Millions. Oh, hell, more like billions. Take it. I'm not even sure money would have much value anymore. 
apart from everything else, I've got this feeling I'm... I'm being used. There's a very good chance that Doug is being used. In a good cause, perhaps, but used all the same. There's a worn-out old cliché that says you can't make an omelette without breaking an egg. All well and good. But what if the egg that's getting broken is the world you've grown up in? The only world you know. It could make you feel pretty uncomfortable. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Doug Sellers didn't have a very good night's sleep. He and Kathy spent most of what was left of the night talking about their new next-door neighbors, Sid and Tootie Jones. That is an odd name, Tootie, isn't it? At any rate, Doug's mood isn't the best this morning. I'm going to have a talk with old Driscoll today. About Sid's gadget, the solar thing? Uh, About how hard the guy's working trying to give it away. There's something spooky about that. I don't like being spooked. You said Sid's crazy to give the thing away. Aren't you doing the same thing if you tell Mr. Driscoll? If I decide to take that nutty engine from Sid, and and I haven't made my mind up yet. I I couldn't possibly handle it on my own. It's going to take a lot of money to get a solar-powered motor in production. I'm not even sure Driscoll Motors is big enough. But won't you have to give some of it to Mr. Driscoll if you bring him into it? Only if I decide to accept from Sid. And if I do... The whole thing was a gift to me in the first place. Well, I just thought... Oh, well, you know best. If you want the truth, I don't know a damn thing. Except that I'm sitting on a keg of very high explosive, and it's making me very uneasy. So, that's it, Mr. Driscoll. The motor works. I saw it work, and it's just... You wouldn't believe it without seeing it. I studied the engine, too, and it it would be simpler to make than most of what we're doing now. Simplest thing you ever saw, really. Except it's it's based on a completely new concept. Hmm. My first reaction, Doug, is nonsense. (laughs) Sure, that'd be anybody's first reaction. But not yours? Well, mine at first, yes. But then I saw the damn thing, Mr. Driscoll. I saw it. No doubt in your mind now? No, no, I'm as skeptical by nature as you are. But the thing works. And it's going to knock everything we know right out the window. Well... That won't be permitted, of course. What I'm interested now is... He offered you all rights? Yes. You sign any papers, either of you? No, I I said I wanted time to think it over. You say this thing works, and I'm prepared to take your word for it. I want 50% of the rights. Straight down the middle. You agree to that? Well, sure, but I... call Al Dobson. He can get the ball rolling faster than anybody I know. I'll get Ed Cahill moving on it, too, and... Well, when can you get this, uh, what's his name, the inventor in here? Uh, look, uh, Mr. Driscoll, all I wanted to do was to tell you about this thing and ask your advice. Now, as you've for... told me, and I'm advising you. Now, you pass the ball to me, and I run with it, right? Mr. Driscoll, I don't have a ball to pass. I just... If you don't have a ball, we know where it is. Your inventor has fumbled it, and we'll take it over. He's no businessman, Sid. Would he have offered to give you a thing like solar energy if he were a businessman? Well, the thing oh, is... Oh, maybe we don't actually have the ball yet, but we... Now, look, Mr. Driscoll, you said... What, what was it you said? I told you it was going to knock everything we know right out the window, and you said that wouldn't be permitted. Now you talk as if you want to go ahead with it. It'll be suppressed. Don't you worry about that, Doug boy. They'll buy us out. Oh. You think the oil industry would let a gadget like this go on the market? <laughs> Not in a million years. And the auto manufacturers? Good Lord. Think what it would mean to them, just the retooling alone. Don't you worry about it, Doug. They'll buy us out. I don't think Sid Jones will go along with that. He'll go along. I told you, he's fumbled. When you fumble, you lose the ball. I washed the breakfast dishes, did two loads of laundry, and vacuumed the living room. I figured it was time to take a break. You mind? Oh, mind? No, I'm delighted. Come on in. Mm-hmm. Let's go in the sitting room. Uh, uh, living room. Oh, 
Which do you call it? Living room. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, anyway, come on in and sit down. <sighs> I didn't have anything to do either. I was just... Oh, I forgot to turn off the... Uh, the uh, uh, television. That's a television set? Oh, you know, Sid. It's one of his inventions. He'll drive me crazy with his inventions one of these days. But the screen's the wrong shape. It's so big. It, you know, it looks... What it looks like when you when you turn it off is a full-length mirror. Well, that's the idea, I guess. People would rather have a mirror in their sitting room than a box with that big blank screen staring at them. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't try to keep up with Sid's inventions. Doug says he's very good. Oh, yes. He's good. Doug says he's uh, way ahead of his time. Ahead of his time? Yeah. You know, uh, inventing things the world just isn't ready for yet. Like that solar energy thing. Well, he is very advanced in his thinking. Yes. Sid is very advanced. And he's worried about the, oh, what do you call it? The, uh, uh the ecology. You know, uh, Tootie, mm -hmm. Doug was very upset last night. Oh? Sid wanted to give him that solar energy thing. I mean, you just hand it over to him. Let him take out the patents and take all the credit and make all the money. Oh. Sid didn't tell me he'd gone that far. Why would anybody want to do a thing like that, Tootie? You know, it, it looks funny. Actually, how it looks to Doug is suspicious. Why doesn't Sid apply for the patents himself? That's what anybody else would do. He can't. He can't? We're not... Uh, we aren't American citizens. Well... I, I don't... I can't see what difference that would make, really. There are plenty of American patents held by people who are citizens of other countries. Doesn't Sid know that? Well, we're... Oh, Kathy, I don't know exactly what they'd call us. Unregistered aliens. Something like that. We're actually not in the country legally. We, we don't have any papers or any of that. I see. Tootie, uh, where are you from? I can't tell you. Maybe Sid will want to later on. I, I expect he will. But I'm afraid I've already told you more than he'd want me to right now. Damn it, Doug. What is this thing you've dumped in my lap? What do you mean? There's something mighty queer going on. I called Al Dobson and told him to get the ball rolling. Didn't tell him a damn thing except it was a solar-powered motor. And he had me back on the phone 20 minutes later. 20 minutes. Saying the thing was already out of hand and he had to know more. Out of hand? Uh... They want it. Everybody wants it. Ed Cahill Ed says... Ed Cahill, the patent lawyer? They called him. The patent office called him. Now, you can believe that or not, but that's what Ed Cahill told me. They'd been hearing talk about solar energy down there, they said, and they called him. Well, it looks like... Somebody's the... pushing this thing. That's what it looks like to me. Somebody very big. Well, after all, solar power... I it's... want you to see this, uh, whatever his name is, this kook that's trying to give the rights away. I want you to get this paper signed. What is it? Don't waste time reading it. It's a simple release. Later on, there'll be reams of paperwork. But right now, I want that release signed. All right, Mr. Driscoll. And Doug. Yes, if you don't get that release signed, or if this nutty solar thing turns out to be phony, I'm going to bury you so deep they'll never dig you out. I should never have talked to Driscoll about Sid's invention. What happened? Oh, hell broke loose. As nearly as I can figure, Driscoll's committed himself in two or three places without having a damn thing to deliver. Everything's moving so fast, it's, it's a mess, that's all. Dear, I uh, talked to Tootie this morning, like you said. Mm -hmm. You find out anything? They're, uh, they're what she called unregistered aliens. She said that herself. They're in the country illegally. Oh, good Lord. Doug, what does it mean? I don't know. 
what it means. Trouble, that's for sure. That was why he wanted to turn the invention over to you, Tootie said. He doesn't have any papers or anything. I mean, you know, no ID, no social security, nothing. And he knew he'd get into trouble, I guess, if he started messing around with patents and all that. Uh, he's in trouble, all right. Why? Uh, you going to do something about it? I'm going to call Driscoll and tell him. Oh, Doug, do you think you ought to? Couldn't you just... Oh, poor Sid. What about him, Doug? I'm afraid that'll just have to be his problem. I've got a couple of my own. Well, but do, do you have to tell Mr. Driscoll? Look, I've been working for Driscoll for over eight years. I'm one of the top men in the company. I met Sid for the first time last night. Now, which one am I supposed to be loyal to? Yes, Driscoll here. Uh, Mr. Driscoll, this is Doug Sellers. Did you uh, get that release signed? Uh, not yet. I, I just found out something I think you ought to know. Uh, the inventor, Sid Jones, uh... The guy's not an American citizen. He's in the country illegally. Say that again. He's in this country illegally. A spy. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm sure it's nothing like that. He's, uh... I, I know him, Mr. Driscoll. I, I don't think he's a spy. I might have known. Solar energy, my foot. He's a lousy spy. That thing of his is probably some kind of bomb or something... He's made you believe oh, that... Oh, come on, Mr. Driscoll. I'm not that stupid. That engine that I saw last night was... All right, I'll fix his wagon. You watch me. Thinks he can make a fool of Thomas P. Driscoll, does he? What are you going to do? Never you mind. Oh, boy. What do he say? He's decided Sid's a spy. I guess he means to blow the whistle on him. You don't think he is, do you? Sid? A spy? No, what? I... No, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think so. Well, shouldn't we go over and tell them? I mean, after all, if, if they're in trouble, it's our fault, too, isn't it? Well, at least it's partly our fault. Yes, things seem to be moving along very nicely. Nicely? Sid, he thinks you're a spy. Oh, Tootie, I'm sorry, but... Well, I, I always tell Doug everything, you know. It's all right, Kathy. Oh, please don't feel badly about it, either of you. It's all right. The uh, patent office was interested, you say. That sounds very good. Don't you think you ought to... Look, I, I mean, old Driscoll is going to do something. And that's for sure. And if you're not in this country legally... It's you... all right, Doug. Really, it is. Did you say this Mr. Driscoll gave you a paper he wanted me to sign? Well, yes. Uh, do you have it with you? Yes. Sid, mm -hmm. there is something very odd about all this. I, I mean, you're giving away... A... Sid, do, do you realize what you're giving away? Yes. Well, tell them, Sid. Don't you think they have a right to know after all that's happened? Yes. I want to show you something, Doug. You and Kathy. Oh, the TV... It's another of his inventions, Doug, the television. Did I tell you about that? Mm, I don't think so. I, I don't remember. Actually, it isn't a television set at all, except as you break the word down. Tele for distant, distant seeing. Even so, it isn't that kind of distance. And I get only one picture on it. Always the same picture. Only one picture? Yes. I'll show you. That's the picture. Oh. <sighs> It's not very pretty, is it? Looks more like a moonscape than anything else. Except for those mounds or domes or whatever they are scattered around. How come it's black and white? There isn't any color there, Doug. In the scene we're watching, you'd see it if there were. It's just gray. There's no color at all. Is it a movie? A science fiction movie or something like that? Oh, no. It's quite real. Well, it can't be the moon unless... Unless the other side has put domes up there and we don't know about it. No, it isn't the moon. Tell them, Sid. It's our home. Tootie's and mine. That's where we came from. That's where we've always lived. An alien world, old enough and weathered enough to look like our moon... Well, we've all heard or read stories about such places. That was fiction, of course. 
But it hasn't been so very long since it was only in fiction that men put on space suits and blasted off from Earth and later walked on the moon. Today's science fiction has an unsettling way of becoming tomorrow's fact. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Doug and Kathy Sellers are watching spellbound, but more than a little repelled, a television picture. Something like a television picture, at least, on a screen that becomes a full-length mirror when it's turned off. The picture is a dismal one, a bleak landscape, gray, rocky, and barren as the moon's surface, except for several dome-like structures placed here and there at apparent random. This, Sid and Tootie Jones claim, is their home. There's no place like that on this planet, Sid. No place that I ever saw or heard of. It's on this Earth. We're not space travelers. Oh, I don't blame you for wanting to leave it wherever it is. Well, if you're not space travelers, then what kind of travelers are you? Uh, let's all sit down. It's a long story. Shall I turn it off, Sid? No, no, no. Leave it on. Uh, somebody might come out of one of the domes. They'd be interested in that. What kind of traveler, Sid? You've already guessed it, I think. Y yes, we're time travelers. Time travelers? Then where... I mean, when is that? That picture you've got on the screen. Uh, two questions there, really. Where and when. To answer the first, it's right here, Doug. Right in this very neighborhood, on this very spot. Well, then... When? Yeah. The year you're looking at is 3987. A little over 2,000 years from now. And that's... That's what this neighborhood looks like? That's what the whole world looks like, Doug. Worse... This is a garden spot. Oh, it's some kind of trick, isn't it? I mean, it's just something you invented. More and... like something you invented. You, all of you, and the next few generations. That's misuse of the Earth's resources. All of your mistakes carried out to their final inevitable conclusion. You're looking at the end product of your era's short-sightedness. I... I just don't believe it. Well, there it is. You can see it. But well, then it wasn't the, uh, it, it wasn't bombed out? The A-bomb, the H-bomb, all the alphabetical bombs that came after? No, they were never used. Except to waste the Earth's substance and terrify its people. There, on the screen. Somebody's coming out of the B-7 dome. Can you see who it is, Sid? No, not to be sure. Forex, most likely. I think it was his turn at B-7. What's he wearing that thing for? Looks like a space suit. Well, that's what it is. We call them Atmo suits. There's no atmosphere now. None, at least, that's breathable. Except underground, where we convert it. Good Lord. Yes, we live underground. We come out now only to run tests. The toxicity of what's left of the atmosphere isn't very stable. We have to draw it in and purify it, so we need to keep abreast of what we're up against. And pump the impurities back out? Yes. And that increases the toxicity? Yes. The problem isn't solved. We're living by stopgap measures. We have some time, though. There's a lot of air out there, even though most of it is poison. And there aren't very many people to breathe what we salvage. How many? Well, in B7... Oh, no, uh, you mean worldwide? Yeah, yeah. Oh, around 700,000... Between seven and eight. In the whole world? <laughs> Actually, that's a lot. It was down closer to 100,000 when we finally got the underground communities established. We were that close to extinction. We're the only survivors. Everything else is gone. We're here on a mission. You must have realized that. What kind of a mission? A very simple one. We're here to save the world. <laughs> Yeah, I want to talk to the chief of police. He's out of town. What, what can I do for you? Listen, I'm Thomas P. Driscoll of Driscoll Motors. I want to report a spy. Report a spy. 
Thank you to give me the details. I can only give the chief the details. No way, Mr. Driscoll. I offer you a spy, a genuine spy, and you won't put me... All right. All right. I'm coming over there. By God, I pay my taxes and I'm entitled. I'll be over there in ten minutes. Did you say save the world? You're here to save that world 2,000 years from now? That world, which of course is simply this one grown old. That's a dead world. It's beyond saving in our time. We have a few hundred thousand people living inside it. Like people on one of your life rafts. If the people on the raft aren't rescued, they'll die. The same with our people. They'll die or their grandchildren will or their grandchildren. We few have survived the catastrophe temporarily. And so you've come back here, back to our time with... With the only treatment that can possibly save the world. We have a cure for its sickness and we mean to administer it. Uh, call me one of the doctors. There are many of us. Many of you? Oh, yes. One man could never do it. Your Mr. Driscoll was very right about that, Doug. We have many people in this time, some of them in very high places where pressure can be applied, where red tape can be bypassed. Uh, speaking of Driscoll, Sid, I, I think you ought to... Don't worry about it. It isn't important. Now, will you let me sign that paper he gave you? All right. I've read that the people of your time set great store by pieces of paper with signatures on them. What are these numbers you put under the signature? Oh, that's just to make it thoroughly legal. That's my designation in my own time. 6D48M. We have numbers instead of names, although we still use nicknames. Mine actually is Sid from 6D. My designation is 2T93K. Tootie. 2T. <laughs> that's kind of a cute name, though, once you get used to it. Well, if you had time travel, I mean... Why did you wait until the world got into such a state? A time translation is a relatively recent discovery. But why this particular time? I mean, why not earlier or later? Oh, no, irreversible damage has been done at this time. As a matter of fact, it was at this time and point that the depletion of resources began accelerating so rapidly that it got out of control. Any later would have been too late. Well, much earlier, you wouldn't have had the technology needed to use what we wanted to give you. I hope I haven't spoiled it for you. For all of us. No. If it doesn't work, it's nobody's fault but my own. I made the decisions. It was my assignment. I told you I'd get to the chief, and you said he was out of town. Orders, Mr. Driscoll. I still don't know why he took me off the desk and handed me the job. It's FBI work. Well, don't you worry about that, Wilson. You think the two of us will be enough? I mean, if he should decide to shoot his way out or something like that. There are two carloads of good men following us. The house will be surrounded when we go in and there won't be a chance of his getting away. Yes, there's a car stopping out in front now. Tootie, will you turn the screen off? I already did. Oh, Lord, it's old Thomas P. himself. Mr. Driscoll. And a cop. Odd. I thought it would be your FBI. Oh, Mr. Driscoll looks very determined. Mad as a wet hen, that's how he looks. Well, he shouldn't be angry. He may make a great deal of the money you people prize so highly. Oh, you will too, of course, if things work out. How can things work out if they're coming to pick you up? There are many others, as I told you. My being found out shouldn't affect anything. Uh, maybe you could still get out the back way, Sid. Oh, I... oh I'm sure we're surrounded. Oh. People are very impatient in 1975. I'll let them in. It's your name, Sid Jones? Well, that's what I'm called, yes. Won't you come in? Put the cuffs on him, why don't you? He's your spy. What are you waiting for? Jones, is it true that you showed uh, Mr. Uh, Sellers, is it, that you showed him an, an invention of yours last night? Well, yes, it's still down in the basement if you'd like to take a look at it. Sergeant, you'll be making a great mistake if you arrest this man. Have you lost your mind? Sergeant, I can prove beyond any question that I am not a spy. Will you allow me to show you the proof? Watch him, Wilson. He's up to something. We got only your word, Mr. Driscoll. Go ahead, Jones. Thank you. Tootie, will you help me with this? Wilson, are you out of your head? Oh. 
What's back of that looking glass, Jones? What's the glass got to do with this? Well, that's what I'd like to show you. There's no danger, I assure you. No danger, he says. Just don't try anything. Tootie? The third button? Yes, the third button. What's happening? That, that's no mirror. Look at that thing. It was turning all milky, foggy. Wilson, why don't you do something? He can't get away. Give the guy a chance. I think it's ready now, Tootie. Stop her! For God's sake, somebody stop her. She's disappearing into that looking glass thing. Goodbye, Doug. Goodbye, Kathy. Thank you very much, both of you, for all you've done. Stop right there, Jones. Stop or I'll... Or you'll what? He's gone, you idiot. You let him walk right through that looking glass. It's changing again. It's... Look, Kathy, it, it's making a picture. Oh, my God. A park. It's a beautiful park with trees and flowers and people walking around. And not in those miserable spacesuits either. No. It's bright, pretty clothes. And children play... Oh, Doug, it... It must... Look, there's a dog, a little poodle. For God's sake, what kind of mirror is that? Break through it, you fool. Smash it. I... Don't care what it is. Smash it. I guess you're right. Now, please stand aside, all of you. What are you going to do with that gun? Just use the butt of it to break the glass, ma'am. Now, please stand clear. There's nothing back there but the wall. Just a plain blank wall. Oh, uh, I I almost forgot. Here's that release you wanted Sid to sign, Mr. Driscoll. I don't want the damn thing. I don't want anything to do with him and his, his, his magic mirrors. I, I don't want any part of any of it. I don't think you really have a choice, Mr. Driscoll. That was a park we saw through the looking glass before the sergeant here smashed it. And if they have a park, we have solar energy. We couldn't change it if we wanted to. A park where there was a desolate wasteland only a few minutes ago. But wait, it wasn't a few minutes ago at all, was it? It was over 2,000 years in the future. And what this implies is that there are at least two quite different futures, both possible, which in turn implies that we have, at this exact point in world history, reached a crossroad. I'll be back shortly. Perhaps we shouldn't be surprised if uh, one day before too terribly long, we hear that solar energy is in the process of being harnessed. In any case... I believe that 6D48M, alias Sid Jones, has given us something to think about. Let's hope the right people do the right kind of thinking. Our cast included Ann Shepard, Jack Grimes, Evie Juster, Russell Horton, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.